All right. <clears throat> we are family. on the back side. We are family. <laughs> we're on the back side of something that we're we talked a few little bit about. Uh, Life. Maybe a little bit. The <laughs> pandemic. Oh. The COVID pandemic. I don't know if this is a mark of the end of it, if this is the beginning of the end of it, or what have you. But that's an back in twenty. In <laughs> back in twenty twenty, the lawmakers passed a rule that people were kept on Medicaid automatically. Typically, from year to year, you have to reapply every single year for Medicaid coverage, and they send you out paperwork like six, three months before you're eligible to either come off or to renew, you send the paperwork in, blah, blah, blah. 2020, they <clears> said <throat> that they are automatically enrolling people into the government program. And even if they no longer met requirements for coverage. So, for instance, <clears throat> my better half, Miss Marcy, uh, was laid off from work. She went on unemployment and she qualified for, she went, checked on it just because she wanted to make sure serenity was still covered uh didn't care you know anyway they was like oh yeah you're gonna qualify since you're a tip you're out of work mm -hmm. you're laid off so she went on and then three months later when she went back to work she contacted him said okay i'm back to work i can do coverage again they're like oh no no we are not allowed to kick you off so the government passed a rule that once you became eligible for the pandemic in the year 2020, you were automatically renewed for a period of time. Well, in 2021, they renewed it for one more year, and that uh, for I think it was two actually two years. So here we are, April. What is today? The fourth, April the third. April third. So Friday will be April the sixth, right? Am I doing the math right? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, the sixth of April at midnight. They will be no longer doing the automatic renewal for Medicaid coverage. Mm. 15 million people are going to be affected wow. by this. Now, they're not just saying you wake up Friday or Saturday morning and you're done. They're not going to do that, of course. They're going to, over the next 12 months, they're going to minimize the amount of recipients based on qualification. So, People like Marcy that got a new job with a significant pay raise. She's no longer going to qualify for the coverage. She'll be one of the first ones to go. But you've got those that didn't do the renewals, those that and others that uh, don't qualify anymore will eventually be kicked off over the next 12 months. Well, the reason I brought this up is, like I said, we haven't talked about COVID for quite a while. And we all know that, you know, there was all of us have battled it and in mine and Fisher's case yeah. battled it twice. Mm -hmm. You know, you've you've got one side that's vaccinated, the other side that's not vaccinated, and there was that whole propaganda. And you know, if you're vaccinated, you're good. If you're not vaccinated, you're the devil. And this, we talk right. about an exha an exhaustion. Well, but at the end of the day, opposite. if you're vaccinated, you're the devil, and if you're not, yeah, you're good. Yeah. yeah, one way or the other. So yeah. here we are, three of us here today. <laughs> on the back side of this and you know what did we what have we seen in change over the last three years that could probably be an entire show on all the change we've seen since february march march 2020 mm -hmm. sure is anything of these changes directly affected you that you'd like to talk about do you have any comments or concerns about the enrollment or the de-enrollment of the medical coverage for everybody. Um, I see it as a possible problem. You know, there's going to be people not having medical coverage. What's going to happen to the billing department at these hospitals and doctor's offices? Is that going to cause a, a steamroll effect on delinquency and and credit and all this, all this that goes along with it? I'm just kind of concerned, but. I hope it's going to be a slow roll process and that it's going to be an easy transition, but we will see. Porter, what do you wow. think? Wow, that's a, a lot to unwrap. 
It um, is. And I apologize I, for that, but there is no, a lot. No, no, I wasn't I didn't mean it like that. I mean, it's just so many ways we can go with this is what I was trying to say. <clears throat> um, I, I'm going to go a different angle because I can't really answer too much about that. But I know this. Our government, uh, you know, I, I love America. I love our country. I'm proud to be an American. And that doesn't mean we stick our head in the sand and don't recognize that we've got some serious problems. And one of the problems that I see, and, and, and a lot of this, from being a minority, I see it. With all of the help that America does for people, there's a price attached to it. And the help mm -hmm. is not given to help you get a leg up, especially if you're a minority. The help is given, but you have to be willing to sacrifice freedom and the ability to get ahead in order to take the help. Yeah, we'll give you ways to eat. We'll give you ways to get medical. We'll give you ways to get a check every month. But God forbid you get any kind of a job or a way to get ahead, a way to get out of debt, whatever, where as soon as you do, we're going to take this from you or we're going to take that from you or we're going to reduce this or we're going to reduce that. And I see it all the time. And it's tantamount to slavery in a passive aggressive way, because when you become part of the system, you got to be adherent to the system. You might get free medical, but these are the only doctors you're going to be able to see. You might get food, but this is the only food you're going to be able to eat. And I see, talking about Marcy's case and people who have suffered from the pandemic, um, while it's appreciated what the government did for those, I, I just hope there's not a situation of people who need to catch up and now they're having their legs cut from under them. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. I, I don't know Marcy's situation or anybody else's, but I'd hate to see people who, whatever they lost during the pandemic, are finally getting back together, and now all of a sudden, boom, you're, you're going to have the, the basis from the help that you got taken away from you, and it's going to keep you down. I don't think I ain't worried about people trying to get ahead, but at least somebody get back to where they were. And that's what I think about when I think about government help, this being taken, that being taken. Um, we got to help people get ahead in this country. We're the richest country in the world when it comes to that, you know, per person or whatever. We should be able to help foreigners because everybody in America is doing good. We don't do right by our veterans. We don't do right by our elderly. We don't do right by our, 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 our men and women in uniform. You know, we got to do better. Don't tell me the money's not there. I don't want to hear that crap. You send billions all over, the, you know, God green, God's green earth. That money should stay here and make America like the strongest country in the world. You do that by every individual who was willing to get up and put a pair of boots on, uh, help them out, and those that are not capable to help them out. And those that are not willing, stop giving them everything, you know? Those that are this lazy. So I just I just hope earn. it's just not, yeah, I just hope it's not a situation where we're cutting the legs out from people who are just getting back to at least where they were. That's all I can say about that. And that's what Miss Marcy's worried about. Is she's worried about she's gonna wake up next morning and they're gonna say you're no longer your health coverage is no longer there. It's like you know, she's got to scramble to get coverage. Now, she's got medical benefits through her work when she's ready to you right. know, to do it. So we're not worried about her. It's other people in her same position. Yeah, Somebody right. gets, a, gets a good qualifying job that they're no longer qualified on Medicaid, but maybe they don't get benefits through that employer. What are these people going to do? And that's what that's what I'm worried about is those Absolutely. people. Absolutely. I get it. Yeah, I, I can't add much more than what you guys have already said. I mean, it's it's a it's a there has been some, I guess, progress in national. I don't, I don't know much about it, to be honest with you, as far as the Obamacare and all that, other than it's a way for some to get coverage that maybe couldn't before. I don't know how much it is. I don't know what what uh, what all qualifies and so forth. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm with you. It's if, if somebody's working and willing to work. 
So it's not a matter of they're just trying to sit back and collect, you know, benefits and not be motivated to go out and try to do something, you know, and like you say, the employer doesn't offer coverage that that's, you're putting those people in a real, real tough spot. You know, you're, you're, you get some major bill, you can't pay for it and you're just, you're behind. You'll never be able to maybe pay it off, you know, discourages people from going to get needed health care and prescriptions to make them a healthier individual. It's just a whole bad state of affairs. So like yeah. you say, hope, hopefully people that are trying to get out there and make it work still can get some type of uh, coverage out there. This country, like you say, has got a lot of work to do yet as far as national health coverage. It should be one of the least things to worry about mm -hmm. living in a, in a nation I totally as agree. rich as ours as far as just to get basic medical coverage without yep. worrying about being in a position where you're just, you're, you're in debt for many, many years, if not the rest yeah. of your life, if something happens. And we were, when we were <laughs> younger, you know, we chased, you know, things, cars, you know, women, we want a house. Uh, and as we got older, and I, I know I can speak for you guys, we, we come to realize there's nothing more important than good health. And I think that should be the one fundamental mm -hmm. thing that a country of this magnitude makes sure of when yeah. it comes to its citizens. And your body doesn't know anything about a cutoff date. I'd hate to see somebody who's, you know, gotten this this help and used to it, and they're in the middle of a jam right now, and right in the middle of it, you get cut off. So I don't know how that's all going to work, but definitely keep an eye on it. Yep. Best thing about you right. just about the pandemic in general, Skinner. The best thing about it has been the change in a lot of workplaces like ours. I know yours and mine yes. is you know definitely adopted. The whole, we would not be probably probably would not be working from home and oh, having that having that for me. Yeah, without that uh, change in the pandemic. So that is if there's anything positive in my opinion from that is it's that you know. But, yeah. And, and companies offering opportunities for people remotely that so that, you know, they broaden their horizon with talent to where they don't need to be. They can hire people all over the country who are qualified to do remote jobs. So, you know, that's it. Other than that, I don't know what else really is. You know, came out of the, the pandemic. That was a very, you know, positive change. Mm -hmm. And I so, don't want to belay the story, but Skitter was alluding <laughs> to something even bigger when he started this seeing these changes what is it signifying or are we getting close to officially saying the pandemic is over you know are we going to see more and more changes as far as things ending or things going back to normal that type of deal um it's interesting to wonder I, you know i had to stop myself from reading internet news everything little thing i see because if it do it'll scare you to death you know and because I kept seeing all kind of headlines about, and I'm not saying it's not true, but I'm just, you know, second wave coming up through the pandemic and all this and that and that and this, you know. But then we see things like this that kind of signify, like you said, maybe this is the end of it. Um, yeah, just, just like last year, mm -hmm. Allie and I went to a concert in Cleveland, okay, mm -hmm. just a year ago. And you had to, was it the House of Blues in Cleveland? You had to bring with you either proof that you had tested recently negative wow. or a vaccination record to get into the place. Now, they told you ahead of time, you know, so it wasn't a surprise. And then you fast forward, you know, Alan and I went to the Cavs game recently. I was going normal. to say, because I, I'm going to the people. House, of Blues to, House of Blues tomorrow to see Polyphia, and I haven't heard anything about that, so. Yeah, check just check it to be sure, but there shouldn't be any type of, yeah. uh, okay. you know, uh, requirements from a, from a, pandemic related you know issue or anything like that so you kind of forget about that it just kind of happened all of a sudden you know we yeah. were there sunday twenty thousand people everything was fine everything was normal and you kind of forget that you weren't able to do that not that long ago well wow. think about it, fish we went to the goodyear theater over christmas and that's went right to the show yeah and it was just like you know we walked in was, there are some people i think we saw maybe masks. one or two people wearing masks mm -hmm. it was like just like it was nothing, you know. So yeah, yeah I, I agree with you. The working from home is a big change for us because I would have never done that had the pandemic not happened. Um, I think the overall work environment has changed for not just one industry, but but 
across the globe, you know, um, there are those that, for instance, the bank, we have 200 people that are in the bank, probably 50 are in the office five days a week, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a group, maybe another 50, 75 that are in there once or twice a week. So, you know, before the pandemic, we were all in that office every single day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know my car is thanking uh, the pandemic. So it's, I'm able to keep it uh, in the driveway and I didn't have to sell it with all the miles I was putting on that thing. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> you're uh, right. That's, that's a whole other thing you get into a whole other conversation with. You're right. Is that type of yeah. stuff, you know, less, less driving, less emissions, everything else into the air with a lot of this is, you know, so I don't know. There's a whole, there's a whole thing with that, but anyway. Yep. Interesting. All right. So. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Skinner. Hey, this is Skinner from it came from Gen X. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and like, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>